And we're gonna put covers for the snake book that we just made for this example. So I'm just gonna go ahead and measure this out. Let's see how big this is. It's four inches by three and a quarter almost. And when you make your covers, you want, since this one's going to go all the way around, you want at least one eighth of an inch um, from every side. So it's two eighth, or I guess that's one fourth plus one fourth on each side all the way around. So your measurement. Just say that again. Just say it again. Yeah, um, every cover, just uh -huh. to give it space from when you glue in the sheet to the outside, mm -hmm. um, it's usually one eighth of an inch okay. out. So we're going to add one fourth for one eighth for every side um, to each of our dimensions, each side mm -hmm. of our dimensions. So our dimensions for our binders board is going to be four and oh four and one fourth or yeah four and one fourth inches and three and a half. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and measure this out. I'm going to cut it out. If you need a cheat sheet on a ruler, I'll <clears throat> we'll print out that cheat sheet today, so we'll find that online. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and binders board is kind of hard to uh, or tough to cut in, so just go through it a couple times so you don't use too much force, and I should get it a good cut. Well, that's a good So that's going to be that. So I'm going to go ahead and measure three and a half this way. I'll go ahead and cut it too. That's a cool thing in the middle, though. Square. You can get those as easels in that back room. And couldn't you just take the other one and just um, map it out from that mm -hmm. prior one too? You can. Just to make it, if you need it, make, if you're having trouble with your measurements, just take your first one and just stack it on top. Yeah, so you don't have to. Now why are you not using the right angle side of the triangle? I'm using the grid. You're using for, the grid for Well, that. this is okay. longer for me to cut. But I'm using the grid to line everything up. That's why these mat boards that have these grids on them, especially with the, the quarters, I have one that just has halves, but with the quarters, um, you could easily just line up and cut. Right. Not okay. having to, you know, use your rulers too much. Okay. So this is just a good idea to show you how it's going to look before we put yeah, the... Yeah, looks like a little s'more. Yeah, it's a, it's a s'more book. It does look like a s'more. <laughs> you should put some chocolate in the back one. Oh, that would there. be neat. Yeah, here's some s'more books. Okay. So you can, you can punch a little hole and crack the holes in the top. There we go. We're going to make we're going to make s'mores. We're, we're going to all be hungry. We are, actually. I have like... Yeah. You got the first nine week yeah. lunch right here. Yeah, this would be good for your class. Yeah. Okay, and so we're just gonna measure out our sheet for the covers that we're gonna glue back on. This is that crafty paper from um, paper, uh, paper Arts. So you just wanna give yourself a good half an inch to more if you want to, just all the way around the binders board. So when you glue back in, you have enough to actually catch on and it's not gonna be too tough because you can do it this way. Um, you just have that, um, it can it can buckle out if you don't grip, glue it properly. So we're just gonna go ahead and do probably half an inch. And With one half you, an inch. Mm -hmm, you can measure this out if you want to, or if not, you can eyeball it. As long as you have enough space around, um, it won't really matter since 
It's this is what you're going off of. And that's gonna be covered. You won't see. It. Yeah, you won't see it. So, kind of like the same thing with the last with the fabric one. Same same idea. So what I'm gonna do. should say paper arts as much as we can in videos <laughs> <laughs> do some shameless plugging yeah. paper arts on yeah paper arts on peak street downtown dallas <laughs> the same one we took that whole great field trip to right? yeah the great field trip yeah that really helpful lady yeah like Which one? Sure. Yeah. The paper art. Yeah, paper art. <laughs> yeah, okay. Can you say that again? <laughs> the one that I called Fabriano paper. Yeah, it was probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see uh, Terry being like, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, y'all can quit now. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that one a little bit longer, but it's all right. No one will see it. Yeah. I want to see how you do these corners. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this is where your glue comes in. Because we're going to glue these covers on to the, that binder's cord. And I brought my PVA glue, which I'm going to use real quick. Now let's see that. Fresh. Yeah, for This has a cap on it. And so you're using a little wax paper. Yeah, just a little bit of wax paper so you don't get the glue all over the place. And um, when you burnish it out, when you press down on it, just so you don't get glue on your bone holder, all that stuff. Because I'm going to use that to glue down. So is there a reason to use wax paper rather than just paper? Other paper? It's going to get stuck to it. The wax paper has the wax. So the glue so the glue doesn't stick to it. What's the difference in that glue and like tacky glue or something? There's just the pH. Neutral. You could use pretty much any glue. You could even use Elmer's glue and still be fine. Um, this just has a little bit stronger bond and the archivalness to it. And where do you buy that art supplies? Yeah. Um, Amazon, Amazon too, Amazon. so we don't get a cap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazon. We could buy we, we you can pass the, I didn't get a cap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't get a cap. So is it like already up top? It, no, it, no, no. Cut. No, I would, cut John gave me a and... thing to put it in, and I did it. And I put it. Oh, that's so now he's gluing the back. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm so going brush, to brush the glue. Brush the back, yeah. And you have to just try to get even. If not, you will get buckles um, of like little air pockets on your paper and your cover, and that could look pretty ugly um, if you don't glue it or if you don't have this evenly all the way out. And what you can do when you Go ahead and just draw a square out onto the sheet so you know where to place it if you're doing by measurements. But since I'm just gonna, for like, I guess demo purposes, and just to show you, I'm gonna go ahead and just eyeball it because it's all gonna wrap around, so it won't, it won't make that much of a difference. So what I do here, I'm gonna get wax paper on top, uh, and then I grab my phone folder and kind of just smooth that out so all the glue can come out towards the edges. Go ahead and just try to get the little corners in, which they're going to be folded in anyways. We have that already. The next, um, you can either fold in so you could get your corners this way, and we can glue this in, and then we fold these back in so you have, you know, little little corners covered. Yeah, this is the hard part. And that's an easy way to do it. Or I'll do it both ways just to show you. Or you can actually cut out those corners. Because what you want to do is try to have this for it to be almost like a 90, or I guess 45 degree angle. And then we cut these. Wait, let me go ahead and do that. Get there. 
and cut these small little corners out. And with this paper, you can kind of punch it in where, see, because you fold one in and you fold the other and it should cover it still. And just, when you glue them down, just punch them in. It but the other way, you don't have to cut anything. Just fold in and you have like these corners. It a little more bulk there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that actually looks pretty nice too. Yeah. Either way, however, gonna however you want. Yeah, let's yeah, look at them. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do both of them, okay. so. And also the fabric, if you're using the fabric, if it's a really thick fabric, mm -hmm. the fold over will really put a bump on the end. Yeah. And if you don't want that bump and you want it more smooth, then cut it, so. I'll do the other end the other way. Yeah. And there's also a trick just in case you do cut too much. And let's say if I cut too much and I fold it in and you can see um, the binders board, just get another piece of paper, kind of glue that in. Yeah. And uh, with glue and with the paper, of course, the covers, you can cover pretty much anything and still be okay. Okay, so I have that. I'm going to go ahead and glue each side through. I'm going to do two sides at a time just to. And then just fold that back in. And if you want to, with the book cloth, uh, for, which for sure recommend just coming back in with your bone folder and pressing that in so it could stay in place. And uh, when you do these covers, you're really supposed to lay, let them on the press for a good day or a good couple of hours just to get the glue really in. So something you do before you leave the day. You can do a couple covers at once and then walk away and then come back in the morning and put them in. And what I do is when I make the hardbound books, you guys, that I brought in, um, I usually do it all together and put them underneath the press all at once. And just put wax paper in between the sheet and the couple of sheets that you would have to glue, glue in just so that everything doesn't stick to each other. And these edges kind of like stick out just a bit. You can always punch them back in on each side so they can cover up that binders board pretty nice or just a lot better. You know, I find it fascinating how 